Good afternoon and welcome to a rather overcast day. And yes, this is our first Lexus, the RX 450H Plus Hybrid. And yeah, it is a bit of a behemoth and we've already road tripped it and been on adventures. There's also been 14 journalists behind the wheel too. It's quite hard to believe that the RX has been out since 1997. This is the fifth gen. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Now when it comes to the RX, it's not just the 450. You've got a 350 and a 500. You've got ICE, HEV and FEV. So there's a powertrain that's gonna suit your needs. And then you've got the grades on top of that. Premium, Premium Plus and Takumi. Under the bonnet, you've got a 2.5 four cylinder engine coupled to an electric motor and then a battery, which is around 18 kilowatt hour. And that'll give you around 30 to 40 miles of pure electric range. As for the gearbox, well, it's an ECVT. And if you've driven one of those recently, you'll know they've evolved massively from CVT. They now get power down pretty much instantly. You'll still get a bit of a sound from the engine, especially if you floor it. Economy, we've been running it without any hybrid whatsoever, and it's still been returning over 40 to the gallon. Put power in it in the battery, and you're looking at more like 250 mile per gallon. So that's what we're going to be testing in the next couple of days. Thing is, it is a fantastic SUV. And like all Lexuses, it'll last forever. But it does have a price tag that reflects that. But what you get for the money, well, that impresses across the board. For example, the safety on this is across all grades. Now, that, that's just excellent in itself. There's so many manufacturers over the years that have charged for extra safety. If you're looking at, say, one of these with the Takumi and some options, you're talking around £83,000. Whereas this, well, it retails for a rather reasonable 68000 I mean, just look at the infotainment screen and the luxurious seats. And since it's first generation, it's come a heck of a way. It's now lower, it's longer, and I think it's wider too. I suppose the biggest thing, the first gen looked raw ready for anything the proportions they almost look top heavy whereas this it's sleek and it's modern led lights and their three beam bi projector they can light up a country road with ease styling well you're either going to love it or hate it i like the new styling when it appeared on the forecourt i thought rather than an suv it's more like a an evolved bigger car the shaping around the headlamps as i mentioned all singing and dancing including high beam assist and automatic. Safety across the board includes AEB, collision detection and mitigation systems. It's the whole package. If you like this type of video, why not subscribe to the channel? You just hit the button on the right hand side. It's free and you'll get an alert every time we upload. Also, if you do like the video, why not give it a like? It all helps and it means we can get more cars. Thank you. And from the side, it does look like it has a large front, but to be honest, the nose cone and the shaping well, it really suits it, especially with the styling around the grille. And yes, the big Lexus badge. The combination of colors and the sculpture here. Now, yeah, it's strange to see small wheels on an SUV, but that's when you realize they're not small, they're actually 19. But with this added profile on the tire, that allows it to be comfortable on-road and off-road. And it is all-wheel drive, and it's got around 305 brake horsepower meaning it can pull 0 to 60 in around six and a half seconds. I do like the styling down the side with the arches and essentially side skirts. Look at the color scheme. So you've got the black with the Mesa red. Considering its size, it carries off the styling exceptionally well. Okay, let's take a look inside. So we've got power folding door mirrors, they're heated and you've got blind spot detection. And you barely need to touch this the door opens nice and wide. Now there is an abundance of black, but the stitching lightens it up and it's finished beautifully. Padded areas and plush premium materials. Even this section's carpeted. Decent door pocket. And if you want to go for the really premium sound system, believe it or not, you can get a 21 speaker setup. To be honest though, this sounds pretty damn good. Almost forgot doors that cover the sills electric seats and memory and automation pretty much throughout climbing in well child's play quite literally just look at the way that the cockpit's angled towards me and these are a nice touch just press it to release 
or you can pull it. It feels very substantial, well built, soft touches everywhere. Power tailgate, you can release your petrol cap. And yes, we do have a grab handle and we can adjust the seat belts. That's it, Lexus know their audience. Ooh, lovely and solid. But as I said, amazing build quality. Mega sturdy, as in rock the car sturdy. I have noticed that some of the elements have flex to them, but to be honest, it doesn't detract from the overall experience. I think the biggest thing is the fact how different it looks to obviously the first and second, third, etc. gens. It's far more modern. It's sleek, it's futuristic. But the thing is, it still has almost a traditional feel to it. So you've got the shaping round here, but you've still got rounded elements. You now it's well executed across the board. Lovely padded areas. And this armrest is wide enough for you and your passenger. Cup holders. As for this, it's like a cavern. And look at the smooth sliding motion. It's got like colors and almost tiger stripes running up it. It reminds me of interiors like, I suppose, old Mercedes. And more recently, but not recent, the Fatal. USB-Cs and lots of rotaries. A little joystick to get the perfect position. Chunky indicators. Yes, you will find hard plastics, but they're of a good quality, but pretty much everything you touch is soft especially places like this, where your knee, as a driver, pushing against the infotainment system. I mean, look at the size of it. Nice and responsive, easy to use, and there is an app. Car settings, DAB radio. You also operate your climate, but because it works in conjunction with the rotaries, it's all very easy. Proper buttons for your demisters, and a real rotary volume button. It may have the big screen, but the functionality is there. As I said, Lexus know their audience. They don't want to be fumbling around in screens to try and find something seven pages in. They want things to be touch of a button. And yes, you've got navigation. It's very hard to catch out. Start, stop button. And if we move towards the shifter, you've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, and sport. It's a lovely little thing. And to put it in drive, you need to push it right and push forward. Actually, you don't. Interestingly, reverse is forward and back is drive. And then back straight is sport. A simple park button. An electronic handbrake, hill hold assist. There's your EV mode. It also doubles as auto and HV. Now the thing is, if you've not got enough power in the battery, it will activate. So that's normal. Now this is an interesting one. And it says EV and then hold to charge. And if you hold that down, when you're going down steep hills and using your regen, it'll charge up your battery. Best bet though, is to keep a bit of battery in it. And then that way you will get super economy. I do like the cluster on this. It's very straightforward. You've got charge, eco and power, and it just moves through. And the fact that it's digital analog in a clock format, it looks very nice. On the right hand side you can see the charge of your battery, so your hybrid system, and your petrol gauge. Adaptive cruise control, and you've got some of your audio settings here. So I've had to delve into the infotainment screen, and I can see things like the driver support. Overtake prevention? You can also change things like the acceleration on the adaptive. So when it changes lanes, you can either get it to gun it, do it like mildly, or crawl past the seats. They're comfortable, they're supportive, premium materials, nice, plush. And even the passenger seat is electric. Headroom, well, speaks for itself. What is it? Even with a sunroof, I've got about an inch at six foot three. So yeah, perfectly feasible. On the left-hand side, I've got a footrest and I've got decent leg room. And I do like the way it's engineered in a cockpit manner, meaning you feel connected to the car. It reminds me of my old school Sierra. That was always tilted. To be honest, I think it was more so, but this, it still allows it to be open for the passenger, which I think is important. Now it's certainly what you call sporty, especially with the black elements and the stitching. What I'll have to look at is if there's lighter interiors. Even if it is only this color, these light elements lift it. I'd be very happy with this. Now the one thing that does get me is this. 
This reminds me of 1980s Orions. And you can get a moonroof. Now, I've been playing with the Lexus voice system and it's pretty good. Just press the button on the steering wheel. Put my window down, please. Opening driver side window. See, he knows where I am. Start the rear wiper, please. Turning on rear windshield wiper. List of commands, please. Here are some commands you can try. So you've got general navigation, audio, phone, vehicle. It's rolled out across the whole system. So, air outlets, upper body. Adjusting airflow mode to upper body. How cool. And it does clear the windscreen rather quickly. One final button here. And I presume it's off-road mode because it's got a tree and some gravel and a car on it. The new platform that this is built on, it allows it to be lighter, more agile, more rigid, and it's lower than the previous gens too. Now they've put a lot of time and effort into this. One last thing. You've got your paddles on the back of your steering wheel. Let's take a look in the back. This is also a handy idea. You've got a light embedded in the bottom of the door pocket and it just illuminates the ground. A bit different to say the puddle lights. From the side you really get a feel for the ride height. They'd be able to do campsites, rocky trails, nothing too strenuous mind. Far more than you'd expect it to. But that all-wheel drive system would help immensely. Talk about design language. Flared haunches, one piece window. It gives it, well, a real presence. It's rather elegant. And yes, this is where you charge it. So it's type two, it's chunky and it's illuminated. As for charging times, with a seven and a half kilowatt wall box, I'd be expecting two to three hours. Let's take a look in the back. Same light operation. The door opens nice and wide. And to be honest, this is a decent opening. Rear door cards that match the front. Padded areas, you've got your electric window, and even the door handles carpeted once again. Fine in, looks to be child's play. Do note though, it can be quite a step. For me, yeah, it's just not a problem. I do need to duck my head slightly once in. Even if I tip my head right back. No, I've still got about an inch clearance. at six foot three. And I've noticed that the seat's raised, so I've got a good view out of the windscreen. And I can get my feet under the seat. The great addition that you see on the front door pocket a light that illuminates the rear passengers as they step out. Clever thinking. Yeah, it's shaping up to be a rather nice SUV, this. And if I grab this lever here, I can even recline my seat. <sighs> Just need a screen. Now that's interesting. I mentioned on the outside it's one piece glass, but from the inside, you've just got this, this little window here, but it does let a decent amount of light in. Considering the black roof and the privacy glass, it feels quite light and airy. And I didn't really expect that, especially with this. But if you look, the rear windows are quite tall and I've got a great view out. That reading lights in the center and a grab handle above every door. That's something I do like to see. And I mentioned it's dual zone. It's actually tri-zone. So we can operate the heat from here. We've also got USB-C adapters. Pull down armrest and good to see this recline separately. Comfortable supportive seats and they're finished the same way as the front. Isofix points and yeah, premium materials once again. And if you've noticed, this is quite long. Some vehicles it's a fair bit shorter. It's plush. It's comfortable. It's a fantastic vehicle to do long hauls in. Let's take a look at the back. This is a work of art. I just love the styling, the sleekness, the sculpture, the rounding, full size light bar, elegant, simple lettering for Lexus. It just oozes sophistication and it's got a real prowess. Yeah, you know, it really speaks to me, the design. Beautiful. Parking sensors, reversing camera, cross traffic alert, high level brake light, shark fin aerial, and your stealth wiper hidden up here. Let's take a look in the boot. Power tailgate. Well, that opens in a decent time. Okay, quick test. Nice. Now that is a decent size. No boot lip. And we've got a sub here, proper buttons to drop the seats. Anchor points and 
two rear lights. Let's have a look under the floor. Now with a FEV, it's not always necessary to use a seven and a half kilowatt wall box. For a start, we've got a home charger and I think we'll trickle it overnight. Clever little shopping bag hooks that fold out and 12 volt. Perfect for things like dash cams. Let's remove the parcel shelf and drop the seats. So you just quite literally pull in and it drops down. It's nice and easy. And then, so you've got your left and your right. Let's try left first. Nice. It falls perfectly into place. Now it doesn't lay entirely flat, but it's pretty good. And very little gap here. I quite easily get my electric mountain bike in there. And possibly another one. Didn't expect that. Let's take a look under the bonnet. I like the way that slows. Bonnet release is located here. And just pull to release, push left. And yes, it's on struts. 2.5. And the likelihood is it's an Atkinson cycle system coupled with the ECVT. Nice and simple to see where to top up fluids. Nice and straightforward. I do like the dual hinges as well, extra secure. Now, if you want to know what's going on with your powertrain, charging, and see all manner of features in your vehicle, use this QR code, and that'll allow you to download the app. It tells you lots of information, including state of charge, shows you if the vehicle's locked, and all manner of features. Well, we're on our way. It's a refined experience, isn't it? Oh, you can say that again. All I can hear is a little bit of tyre noise. Rapid. So, under the bonnet, we've got a 2.5 four-cylinder. This is the plug-in hybrid electric variant. And it's got about 305 horsepower. The thing is, this is a pretty big SUV. But the thing that really grabbed me about it, and yes, it can shift, because you've got 305 horses and an electric motor at the front and an electric motor at the rear, it offers all wheel drive, meaning you can hit 0 to 60 in around six and a half seconds. Yeah. And especially when you hit sport mode, which is just literally not the shifter back. And yes, that is an ECVT. Considering its ride height, it feels very well planted. Lovely suspension, comfortable, pliable, and it seems to be bounce rather than bump. Even doing, say, 50 miles an hour, the input from the steering, it's pretty good. Direct, great feedback, and lovely and weighty. And it does lighten up when you're doing maneuvers. It's just a really nice SUV. It doesn't feel like a big wallowy beast. It's, it does have like a refined driving experience. Yeah, ECVT, if you floor it, you will hear the 2.5. But if you pull away, say, sedately, shall we say, you won't hear it at all. Nine times out of ten, it'll pull away in electric, and it does have a true electric mode. So look at the cluster. Very straightforward. Charge, eco, and power. And then you've got your gauges on the right. Yeah, pulls away in electric, even though it's showing we haven't got an electric range which means it must put aside a certain amount of battery. Gliding through here in an EV mode. It's tranquil. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, the engine's actually running. That's how quiet it is. Safety, lots. Collision mitigation, collision detection, AEB, lane keep assist, lane departure warning. The thing is, it's not invasive. I can feel it going duh, 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 duh. but. It's only when you start doing, you know, what it, it classes as dodgy maneuvers that it will start going, actually, no. let's hold this down. Yeah. Also, it put the power down efficiently. No squirming, it's just like, mm. Now it's in the charge section, it goes, ooh, like a lilac-y perp. It certainly seems a fast section of road. No, considering its size, it's quite nimble, quite agile. The ECVT works exceptionally well. They're a long stretch from classic CVTs, which were a lot of noise and no go. 
these, they can put power down efficiently, but they can also do it progressively. But I mean, the kick down, considering its size, it just doesn't feel that big. It's a bit like iX in that way. It was a massive SUV, but when you drove it, it had a refined driving experience and it felt more like a mid-size SUV rather than the behemoth. Let's see what the launch is like onto the 65. This is a nightmare at the best of times. It's a very fast road. Clear on the left. They're on the left Complete. and no wheel spin. Wow. Yeah, that can launch. Impressive. That was a very smooth acceleration even in sport, wasn't it? It wasn't... But it was progressive. Yeah. You could feel the power, but it wasn't... It wasn't raucous. It was no. just there. Yeah. Like a tamed beast. Yeah, but I did floor it. You did, it just, but it was it a smooth power down. Power. Yeah. It doesn't just gun it and spin like some EVs and hybrids. Have you noticed that everything is in easy reach of the driver? I do like cockpits like that, and it is slightly angled towards me. So that's that. It's 386 miles of range. Currently, we're getting 39.8 mpg. That's not bad. Bad at all. Yeah. This boasts well into hundreds. And you start using the electric powertrain alongside the petrol. But because it's showing we've got no EV miles, I don't think 40 is bad. And it is going up. What we need to do over the weekend is give it a proper charge. And then we can see how much that affects hybridity and its range. Gonna love hybrids, best of both. Yeah. That's it, they're the perfect stepping stone, aren't they? If you want to head towards an EV eventually. Some lovely twisties. This is the perfect time to talk about body roll and the lack thereof. So yes, it is a big SUV, so you expect it to be lumbering all over the shop. The truth is, the suspension setup on this, it allows for comfort, but doesn't add excessive body roll, which is, I suppose it's the perfect combination, isn't it? Because yeah. it means that the driver and the passengers get a lovely comfortable ride, but at the same time, they're not listing like a boat round corners. You've got a nice raised position, big windscreen, but it's still sloped, so it gives it a sporty look. Just felt lane keep assist then. Grips for England, quite literally. Cheese. Grommet. Cheese. Oh, interesting. The vehicle slowed itself then. So it's similar to the system that we've seen in BMW and Audi. Good nice safety, yeah. Mm. How's it? I need to stress this is not an adaptive. So that's just not normal driving mode. It's like something off Gran Turismo back in the day. Ooh. I can feel the car dabbing off the speed. Anticipating the bend in front. Intelligent vehicle this. You can see the top right of the cluster. That little green light means is some charge mode. Let's try adaptive cruise mode. Pay attention to other vehicles. It will. Add. It's that simple. Scrubs a bit of speed off when cornering. Yeah, you literally just press this button. It gives you a quick warning and then it activates it regardless, which is nice. You've got your lane keep assist on the steering wheel and you can change the distance between the vehicle in front, etc. It's a rather responsive system. Just increased it to 2.6 mile kilowatt hour. 2.8. No, it's far more efficient with battery in the system being taken into account. We're in auto and EV slash HV. So you've got the electric mode and the hybrid mode, and it will seamlessly transition from one to the other. So we're now at three mile kilowatt hour. That is going up really quickly, isn't it? It is and back into hybrid and EV again. Could you tell? No. Smooth. Update and MPG. We're over the 50 mark now. In our short little jaunt around the village, we've managed to increase economy around 14 MPG. The other thing is, when it drops into EV mode, the range doesn't seem to drop. So even if you do one the two miles, it doesn't reflect in that reading. The experience, the feeling it gives you, the tech, the practicality. Like I mentioned, yes, you do pay for it, but it's Lexus. Well, I see you get what you pay for with Lexus, don't you? You do, yeah. 
Just look how it's specced. It's all singing and dancing. And a lovely hybrid system that's seamless. If you're looking for a, well, a rather refined, I suppose, executive experience SUV for the family, yeah. Take a look at one of these. I was going to say, I'd drive one of these. Mm. See what you think.